Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This Satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual topics, especially the path of knowledge. All questions are most welcome. Graham is asking, would there be less obstacles when taking action consistent with pre-allocation? For example, would it be easy to find a job if we are looking for roles that fulfill our pre-allocation? Yes. If it is destined, it will be effortless. Muni is asking, can you please talk about parallel universe and existence theory? It says that each one of us is living many different lives simultaneously. So as you said, it is a theory. And from the point of view of our metaphysics, it's completely wrong. We never call the universe parallel. We call it illusion. So the assumption that uh, there is something real and it is happening in parallel and, and the pe there are people, there are actual people that have actual lives is uh, simply imagination. It's not even a theory because it's not provable actually. It is not falsifiable. So it is not even a theory, not scientific. What is the fact? What is observed? What, what evidence do we find is that actually there is no universe. And actually there is no us. Us means humans. When this is said, all speculations are gone, destroyed. What is the evidence? That's what we always talk about. We are always presenting the evidence. Because path of knowledge is evidence based. It is not theory based. So unfortunately, there is no evidence for this. And not only this, there are probably 20, 30 such theories which are completely based on imagination, nothing else. So we never call it science. What do we call it? Speculation. Because there is ignorance in the mind of that person. He is cooking up these things. That's all it is. There is only one existence. It is full of possibilities, infinite possibilities. That's all. We are not living a life. We are witnessing a dream which is eternal. There is no life. Because life is a dual word. Because when you say life, there is death. When you say birth, there is death. And the time period between the birth and death will be called life. But there is no such thing. So we do not have even one life. It is a continuous presence witnessing itself. This is the essential knowledge. And then, why do we need theories when we know? We, we don't need theories. Who needs them? The ignorant people. Because they do not know, they come up with very funny theories. Shiksha is asking, which came first? The experience or the memory where all experience are stored? So, experience is fundamental. Then there is this theory of memory which is used to explain it. Why do we say that the experiences are stored? Because they can repeat, they can be recalled. So we construct a structure where they are stored. Actually there is nothing like this. So experience is fundamental and then we imagine the memory. To explain it, memory is simply an explanation of what is happening. Can something else happen? Yes, anything is possible here. Usually when we are talking science, we assume that our models are true and then we go in reverse then we explain the experience the final output of the memory but uh, when you observe it your direct experience will say that no there is no memory there are simply experiences illusory experiences then the intellect tries to understand what is happening and will make the models and so on this is the scientific method so actually experiences are not stored this, they are simply appearing. When something repeats, we simply label it as storage. But this model of memory is very convincing. It is so convincing that it is the only model that is working since many thousand years. The model of the memory. Its, na its names are changing throughout time in different cultures. The names are changing. Today we are calling it memory. But... Uh, it has many different names. So which came first? There is no first and there is no last. Because 
time does not exist first means there has to be time for things to come after one another but no even if you take the model of the memory it is exactly there when the experiences are happening the memory will never be seen before the experience have you seen it and there is no experience but i can experience memory then there is the experience of memory it is impossible and the experience is never seen after the memory so that makes it clear that there is no such thing as memory simply explanation of what is appearing but very useful ex- explanation and then we can convert it into technology and that can be used for the benefit of people that is why we make the models they are not true even the models are not useful beyond certain limit for example the models you make of the waking state are not really useful in the dreaming state or in the projected state you can make a model that underlies all the states which a human being can experience actually the human beings don't experience but let's approximately say this so as soon as you leave this experience of being human that model which looked like universal will be useless so ultimately there are no laws also they simply appear like this shiksha is saying yes the model of memory only satisfy to some level after that questions arise like which came first egg or hen yes because now what has happened is the person has assumed that it is happening in time so this kind of very illogical questions will arise but there is answer to these questions there is no time so there is no first there is no last sandesh is asking i learned a lot from you but sometimes i wonder what if the teachings here or from vedas upanishads are totally opposite to reality what if we are only evolutionary creatures nothing else if this is the case what will happen don't worry nothing will happen the human life happens completely in falseness right now there was a word falseness so i use this word sometimes that this life happens in falseness already so if something is proven wrong nothing will happen to your life what will happen if i don't get knowledge nothing at all because your life does not depend on knowledge it depends on illusion it depends on that which is false so look at your history or look at all the places where there is complete ignorance right now also 99% of the world is under the darkness of ignorance what is happening there nothing at all it is going smoothly so not knowing the reality is not a big problem not able to function in the illusion is the problem so that is why these uh, teachings are only given to those who have this kind of curiosity who want to know what is beyond life what is beyond uh, our everyday struggle and uh, you will come to know that whatever is the case whatever is the reality it has no relation to what is happening it will continue ha- happening in the same way no matter which statement is taken as truth that is what is actually happening many people have their own versions of truth so one version is that vedas and upanishads are the truth this is one belief we call it the belief system blind belief out of 100 beliefs there is one belief so what is happening nothing has something changed in the world because somebody has one more belief nothing changes now that is not the path of knowledge you see whatever is the teaching from these books is not the path of knowledge the path of knowledge is concerned with destruction of your ignorance what is ignorance removal of all that was assumed as true remember this sentence it is very important in the path of knowledge that it is simply removal purification of whatever is deposited whatever was accumulated as true false this that it is all cleared and the, that seeker then becomes agnostic he does not become knowledgeable wise or anything great he becomes free that is the goal to become free from ignorance so those who assume that these ancient books are the only reality they are not on the path of knowledge there is a big assumption there blind belief blind faith to become free from these concepts is the goal on the path of knowledge so what will you know nothing at all that which was taken as truth will be destroyed 
that is why this path is not so popular what do people want something spicy and uh, colorful and uh, suspenseful mysterious and look at them they all have their own versions of reality how is the world functioning then it is functioning perfectly as it should function because it is all illusion in the illusion there is no place for truth so like we say on the path of knowledge the criteria for truth are arbitrary and we have also chosen a criteria for truth which is totally arbitrary and subjective many people are shocked when i say this in the lesson on truth the definition of a truth will start with this sentence that truth is a, is a classification of experiences which is arbitrary and subjective now who will agree with this definition nobody they want a specific thing to be true which is impossible it will be always subjective so on the path of knowledge there is one criteria which gives you the truth but as you progress on the path you will come to know that it was simply a tool a logical device and then in the non duality you drop the truth what do we say nothing is true nothing is false also there is truth there is false also and there is a lack of both also and what is the meaning of this statement don't use this statement this is the meaning stop using that is why we never say unity we say non duality no don't say unity we don't know what it is the agnostic will say i don't know what it is somebody will say look there is duality here no no non dual so ultimately the path of knowledge will deny all the knowledge that is called the pure state pure mind that is called freedom what good this is for your everyday life <laughs> useless isn't it siddhant is saying there is no thing in our experience that is unchanging then how do we know who knows that things are changing you see there is nobody who knows anything correct is there anything which knows anything you cannot call the experiencer as who because the the word who will point to an individual and the experiencer is not an individual it is the stationary background on which changes are happening will it know something no it does not know anything it is a witness it is witnessing in, in some of the literature or some of the gurus they will call it knower but there there the definition of knowledge and knowing is to, totally different you know for example rupert spira will say knowing but we do not say we, we, in this context we say experience witness of the experience it knows nothing actually it is simply witnessing because knowledge or knowing is also an experience it is a dual word because there is not knowing associated with knowing but the experiencer is non dual there is no non experience it is always there so what will we know when we when there is a perception of changing phenomena all that can be said is everything is changing you see and nobody will know it it will be perceived like this some people will say no that there perception means there is knowledge isn't it remember that the knowledge says that nothing is changing your knowledge is that the changes are illusory ultimately we have to say something so we say there is a potential there is a possibility of something appearing as a change isn't it but at the level of duality we say there is a changing aspect that is how it appears but remember it is an appearance change is an appearance so ultimately nothing is known and who knows nothing nobody these steps are taken to reach that not knowing just like i was saying right now that uh, the goal is to let go of these concepts if you hold on to the concepts there will be eternal chaos in your mind you won't get the peace rejection is the peace not accumulation renounce so how do we know nobody will know there is nobody to know anything all that can be done is that this something which says i know something can be dropped this is a big achievement if you can drop this individual who claims to know this or that will be achievement and yes it it claims to know that things are changing and they are false and so on ultimately there is nothing emptiness and if you say something about emptiness it is no longer empty and therefore meaningless so silence 
Silence is the perfect answer to all questions. Paramjit is saying, illusion knows that illusion is changing. I am the witness. That is a poetic way, yes. Poetic way of, metaphorical way of saying that. The change is an illusion. It is, it is known in the change. It is known in the illusion. Remember, all knowledge is um, negative. If, if you come up with a positive statement about something, look, this thing knows that thing. That will be torn down. That will be shot down by pundits of non-duality. Negative, yes. Most of people will agree. Negative. No change, nobody knows. Everybody is satisfied now. Everybody is happy. Because no claims are being made. The false accumulation or the false concepts are dropped. End of path of knowledge. You can drop it today if you want. And you can get established in the pure silence. But you won't do it because the intellect is very active. So what do we do? We cut the intellect using the intellect. That is the use of intellect to uh, make it stop questioning through direct experience and logic. But yes, very good question. Nitya is saying, please share your, your views on abortion, feticide, infanticide. My views are very simple, you see. That uh, whatever you see as happening in the society should be governed. The right and wrong should be governed by the society, not by the seeker. Where do you fall? Are you a social person? Are you a worldly person? Or are you a seeker? First, you know your position. Where are you? And then we can decide what is right, what is wrong. Because probably that is what you mean by the views. When a person takes a position, then the, the meaning of the word view is obviously whether it is right or wrong. Ethical, unethical. That's what you want to ask. Nitya Singh, if advice is sought from us. Yes. I know, these people, they will come to uh, seekers and gurus to find out whether <laughs> something is right or wrong. Why is that? They don't know, these people, they don't know what is right. So ultimately, subjective and arbitrary, if there is an abortion, did it uh, do any kind of spiritual damage or uh, social damage or anything, emotional damage? Yes, wrong, isn't it? That is the criteria on path of knowledge, then anything which causes harm is wrong. So, was there a loss of life? Yes. Wrong. Was somebody hurt? Yes. Wrong. Like this. Non-violence is the criteria. We have discussed this in the program. Are you in the program or not? I don't know. But the, the, the videos are already there. Or the um, articles are there. which Where we go into this lot of detail into the matter of ethics. And the bottom line is it is subjective. It has to be decided case by case and person to person. For example, let us say there is a woman and there is a child which is going to be born. But the child is completely damaged, let us say. Has no head, no arms, nothing. But it is a living tissue. It is a living um, piece of meat. Now the doctor says abortion. Now it is completely justified. It is completely ethical. Let us say there is a victim of abuse, rape and all. Emotional damage has already happened. Now the parents say abortion and it is completely right in their point of view. Completely okay because we are saving a life. Under these cases, whatever is thought of as unethical becomes ethical. Is killing unethical? Totally depends on why. You know, intention behind it. If it is a terrorist, criminal, yes. Completely ethical. Killing of innocent people, unethical. Normally, your society will decide who is terrorist, who is criminal, decided by people, collectively. And they can decide anything, you know, arbitrary. Same way, people decide on abortion, etc., etc., in an arbitrary way. From the point of view of non-violence, the greater harm has to be avoided. If you have avoided a greater harm, it will be called non-violence, even if it is violence. But uh, you see, there is no rule like this. There are always exceptions. Actually, there is no rule. There are only exceptions. Everybody has their own right and wrong. But uh, probably some worldly person has asked you about the advice and then case by case basis. How much harm it was causing? You should ask this, this question. 
Was it harmful to the mother? Then right. Otherwise, wrong. Because it is violence. And I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Nobody will agree with you. What do they agree with? Their own biases and stories. First, they make up their mind what is right and wrong. And then they find the justification. And then they will come to you to find justification. Let me see if this spiritual seeker has the right answer. And they will try to match their view with you. Oh, it does not match. Oh, this person knows nothing, not spiritual at all. I'll go to the other person. Oh, there he matches with my view. He is always right. So you see, hardly any intelligence in the society. Mostly when people ask me these things, I say, you decide. <laughs> you, do, you cannot think or what. You decide what is right and wrong for you. But obviously that will be very rude. So you will need to sugarcoat your answer. Sham is asking, in Gyan Mark, do we aim to drop the mind or achieving super consciousness, referring to the debate of nothingness and infinity as the nature of existence? No, the mind is already nothingness and uh, the super consciousness is already present in finite and your true nature is that. So, do we need to drop something? No, it is already not there. Do we need to achieve something? It is already there. What do we need to drop? Our ignorance. What do we need to achieve? Knowledge. That's all is the aim on the path of knowledge. Not dropping, picking, achieving. It will never happen. Something will be known as not true. Something will be known as true. It will be seen that, that what the thing that I wanted is already there. And it will be seen that the thing I wanted to get rid of is already not there. This is very simple path. Nothing is done here actually. People are very lazy here. We do not do any kind of practice. Because it will be known that nothing needs to be done. It is all perfect as it is. This is the knowledge. Siddhant is asking, what do you, what do you about Shakta Tantra? What kind of question is that? Are you asking what do I know about? Or, what, or, or whether I do it or not? What do I know about? You see, all the Tantra is Shakta only. Shakta means coming from Shakti. Is there anything which is not coming from Shakti? Anything at all? No. Everything is. So then what is Sheva Tantra? It is, you see, Shakta only in a different form. Only the name changed. There are many forms then after that. So what do they do there in the Sheva? They worship the uh, personification of Shiva as a yogi, as a dancer, as what not. And uh, the Lingam, which will be never be done in the Shakta Tantra, the proper Shakta. The Lingam is not worshipped nor it is utilized in any way. Do people know these things? No, they don't know. How do I know all these things? You need to join the Tantra Bodhi program to know the secrets. I know so much that if I start talking, <laughs> whole night will be over and you will know only 1%. Why is that? Just now I said we want to drop all the concepts. Unknowing is the... Not knowing is the goal. So... Now we need to change the goals because the path has changed. You have changed the path. So the destination is different now. According to my classification, there are two kinds. Not the shave and shark and all this. They are very old classifications. And the Tantra is dependent and independent. Both are worship and use of Shakti only. There is nothing else here in this existence which can be used. Siddhant is asking, is the Guru field also a Shakti? No, no. It's not also a Shakti. Everything is Shakti. Everything is Devi. There is no example of something which is not Shakti. So this question should not arise. So join the Tantra Bodhi program. You will come to know what it is. This secret is so big that we cannot tell it in public. So why is there a question? Because you do not know the meaning of Shakti. Siddhanti Singh, I have complete POK to join. Yes, you need to complete POK. And on which step you are right now? Step 3, yes. Wait for a few days. Once you get the certificate, all the secrets will be told. We, we do not uh, reveal so much to people who do not know. Why? Because, you see, they will start experimenting and then they will cause harm to themselves or some other people, somebody else. So, the path of occult is very, very secretive. You will never know everything. But in Tantra Bodhi will we'll tell just enough to silence your mind so that you drop all the questions regarding the illusion. 
that much will be told sham is asking determinism versus free will what truly decides our life the answer is very simple you see act as if you are free to act using your intelligence rationality act according to the necessity do that which is necessary and uh, that is the practical solution never worry about whether it is already determined or not determined or random we never worry about these things if it is determined illusion if it is free illusion illusion can appear in many forms so a wise man a very intelligent man acts as if he has the control over the decision making and actions this is the intelligent way to act whether the cause is determined or not ultimately a person must act so we sometimes say that free will is an illusion but in the illusion only illusion works nothing else will work so we act as if we are free to decide if you come to know some day no no it was determined nothing will change in your life you will continue acting in the same rational logical way then you will come to know that determinism is completely illusion so you are in charge of your life you decide what happens here start acting wisely intelligently hopefully there are no more questions so i'll just add that who debates on all these things <laughs> people who don't have anything to do in their lives useless people they keep debating those who have something to achieve something to do they simply do it they do not worry do i have will free will caged will imprisoned will this will that will no 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 we don't have time for that so here we will end our today's meeting thank you everybody for uh, attending today's meeting i'll see you next time